All right, so we're going to get started here, guys, and get things kicked off so we can be on time. Uh, we do have a lot to cover today. So first, I'd like to start off by uh, introducing uh, both the organization, uh, OWASP Foundation, to you, uh, as well as uh, some of the players for today's event. Um, so OWASP Foundation was established back in 2004, uh, and we've been pretty active here in New York City and in New Jersey now. With This is our 125th meeting. So after doing these 125 times, we've gotten fairly proficient on trying to organize and coordinate and have folks uh, provide content for different areas. But I do want you to look around. And if you look around at the whiteboards, you'll notice that there's a, an opportunity for you to actually be interactive with our group, uh, which means that you know, on the breaks, please grab a marker and please go ahead and take the time to fill out or add some information. If you're looking for a job or if your company's hiring, there's a help wanted board. So put your information up there. We can get you connected. Uh, if you're using Twitter uh, and you want to uh, shoot the, the live stream, which is now online, out to the uh, people that are in following you, then go to the OWASP NYC Twitter account and retweet the, uh, the, you know, the, the live stream feed. Uh, if there's things in the chapter that we should stop doing, please let us know. Start doing or change. It's kind of a conversation of this is a community of peers that work together as volunteers to help drive community education and innovation, right? Nobody here is paid. Uh, there's some people involved that actually help coordinate things, uh, but the core group of people that are involved in the OWASP Foundation are volunteers. Um, so with that, uh, quickly on our agenda for today, uh, we're going to go through a couple of different items. We're going to try to stick to our time zones uh, as, as, uh, as appropriate. Uh, we are also doing a raffle. Uh, if you're familiar with Hack5, uh, Hack5 provided us with a Wi-Fi pineapple. Uh, we'll have a box or something up here to get business cards to uh, pull a raffle winner. But also your sponsors that are here. Your sponsors also, some of them have um, um, raffles as well. So please feel free to stop by, say hi to your sponsors, thank them for supporting the event. Uh, and if they have a raffle or something, it uh, might be useful to, uh, to talk to them about that. Um, so before we kick off, uh, Natasha, if we can have our sponsors come up here and, and give uh, a little hello, that would be awesome. Excellent. Check, check. So if you come on uh, about, you know, about uh, your company name and what you guys do, and, and thank you for support, sponsoring. Awesome. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, my name is Weston. I work with Cybercentric. I'm on the business development side, so please no tech questions later. Um, but I'd be glad to tell you about Cybercentric. Um, a brief overview about what we do. We're a data visualization tool for cybersecurity. Um, if I were to ask any large enterprise where exactly on their network, down to the device level, their most sensitive data lies, how it's being used on a daily basis, and what employees are doing with it, uh, they probably couldn't give me a strict answer. They couldn't tell me exactly, and that's something that keeps them up at night. Uh, what we're doing at Cybercentric is we're helping them be able to view on their network where their most sensitive data is so that they could take actionable cybersecurity measures to keep it where it should be. Much appreciated, and I'm gonna hand it off to the next guest Peter. right here. Do it. <laughs> Who you are, what you do. My name is Peter Simon. I'm the founder of OneForce Technologies, and uh, we are a company that helps organizations make data breach prevention simple. Uh, we help organizations treat cybersecurity as a privacy issue and not as a technology issue. We'll give you the tools to uh, create the workflow uh, and policies and procedures around that so it becomes automated, it changes behavior within the organizations. This is my partner, Chris Henry. Oh, and uh, just real briefly, as you may know, all the regulations that are changing within cybersecurity, they're approaching it from the, what they call personal information level. That's what needs to be protected more so than the hardware or your compliance. So what we help is introduce these new changes, what's called privacy information, to ensure that your workflow does not get interrupted, but you still maintain uh, what's called external and internal breaches. As you know, a breach is expensive it could run you up to a million dollars per incident if you are not protecting personal and privacy information. Ed? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ed Chandler. I'm with Virtual Forge. Uh, what we do is we provide security for SAP environments. Um, specifically, we're looking at security in three areas. We're looking at helping with secure coding. We're looking at systems configurations, and we're managing the transports as they uh, push updates throughout your SAP environment. 
This will help with uh, things such as uh, compliances, multiple compliances, depending on which type of uh, organization you are. Um, specifically, one of the new things that have been coming out, which is very interesting, is the European Data Protection Act, um, which if you all um, are doing business in Europe, will affect your organization. Um, so please stop by our booth. Would uh, absolutely love to see you and introduce ourselves. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, guys. My name is Raj Ayer. I'm from Com City Business Solutions, based in Manhattan, New York. Um, we do a lot of stuff. We've been around for over 20 years, um, basically in IT managed solutions. Um, the word cyber is being used a lot these days, the last couple of years, but cybercrime and cybersecurity has been around for over 20 years. The first cybercrime took place in 1894, so it's not something very new, it's just that the jargons are bigger and the data is larger. What we try to do here is we're basically branding risk awareness, risk accessibility, and vulnerability scan as a product more than a service. And we, we do everything that cybersecurity companies do, but mostly we target clinics, law firms, and financial institutions because we are HIPAA certified and we're CSS certified. And this is the reason, we've been around for over five years just in cybersecurity in the tri-state area. That's it. Great, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. We have another sponsor, uh, MRA International. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Rita Sarabella from MRA International. Uh, we're a company based in Long Branch, New Jersey, but we're uh, all over the tri-state area. We handle IT from hardware to security to pretty much anything that you would need from the smallest of places to the largest of places. Um, please stop by my booth. Uh, we can explain more, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Great. And, uh and everyone has a job. I guess I have one, too. Uh, I used to work for Intel Security. Now I work for McAfee. Uh, so McAfee, if you don't know who they are, uh, we have about 250 million endpoints around the world, probably in some of your offices. But more importantly, we also do security assessment work, code review work, penetration testing, uh, investigation items as well um, with that. So we're getting our panel to